Say shalom. Say shalom to the Father. That is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called Jehovah. Oh, what you say you do? That is what you do. Oh, that is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called Jehovah. King of glory, that is why you are called Jehovah. What you say you do, that is what you do. Oh, that is why you are called Jehovah. Oh, Lion of a Judah, that is why you are called Jehovah. King of glory, that is why you are called Jehovah. What you say you do is what you do. <coughs> that is why you are called Jehovah. Oh, Jehovah, you are the most high. You are the most high God, Jehovah. You are the most high. Oh, you are the most high God. You are the most high. Oh, you are the most. Oh, King of glory, you are the most high. Lion of Judah, you are the. Oh, I am that I am. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the reason why we are singing, Father. You are the most I go. You are the reason why we are gathered here. Oh, Jehovah, you are the most high. Oh, you are the most high. Lion of Judah, you are the most. I am that I am. You are the most high God. Hallelujah. King of glory. <coughs> Everlasting Father, Lion of Trouble, Judah, Father, we thank you, King of Glory, we thank you, Shed of Day, we thank you, I am that I am, we glorify your holy name, we give you all the praise, we give you all the adoration, we give you all the honor, Father, we thank you for this wonderful hour, all oh, Father, that you give us, all oh, Father, to be in your presence, all oh, Father, to share your word, you say man shall not live by bread alone, by Every word that proceed out of your mouth, Father, we thank you, Lord, Father, because you say we should meditate it day and night, oh Lord Jesus, Father, to grow spiritually, oh Lord Jesus, Father, so that you remember always your promises, oh Lord. Father, thank you for this wonderful moment. We welcome the Holy Spirit to come and give us understanding in your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cover ourselves the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Spirit, come and reign in our midst. Come and give us discernment, O Lord, for our wisdom, O Lord, for to understand your word, O Lord, and knowledge, O Lord, for to know what is right and what is wrong through your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father, for this moment. Come and take over, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. God bless you, brethren. Today I'm not alone. I'm here with my little niece, my little niece called Moisette. Her name is Moisette. Moisette comes from Moses. Hallelujah. So she's here with us. We are going to read the word of God in the book of First King 13. Uh, let's start from verse 1. All through, we'll, we'll go all the way to verse 22. Hallelujah. The story here, I think it might be familiar to you, it might be not, but today we'll find out through the word of God, hallelujah. This message, I so love it because it teaches me a lot, especially in this, our heavenly rest, it teaches me a lot, it gives me understanding of many, so many things that you should trust only in God and we should not disobey the word of God, hallelujah. So we are going, you are going to, if you have your Bible there, uh, you can also read it from your side. And then we discuss with it. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the first king, uh, the book of first king uh, 13, I start from verse 1. It says, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord into Bethel. 
and Jer Jeroboam they st stood by the altar to burn incense. Verse 2 say, And he cried ag ag against the altar in the word of the Lord. He said, and said, O altar, altar, thus said the Lord, Behold, a child shall burn into the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the, the priest of the high priest. Shall you offer the priest of the high place that burn incense upon thee, and man's born shall be born unto thee. Verse 3, And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes, uh, ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Verse 4, Wait. Verse 4, and it came to pass when the king Jer Jeroboam heard the, the saying of the, the man. Sorry, stop. He said, the, um, He heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in the battle, that he, po he, he put forth he put forth his hand. Sorry for any distraction. He put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it, pull it in again to him. So, verse 5. The altar also was rent and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God has given, as given by the world. <coughs> by the word of the Lord. Verse 6 said, And the king answered and said unto, he said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may, may, may be restored, may be restored me, may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. And verse 7, And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half, the, half thine, thine house, I will, not, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat not bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou comest. So he went another way. I'm reading ten now. So he went another way and returned not by sorry, return not by the way that he came to Bethel. <laughs> now now there dwell an old prophet in Bethel. And the son came and told him all the works that the man of God has done that day in Bethel. The word, the word which he had spoken into the king, then they told also the, their, their father, to their father. Twelve, and their father said unto them, what way, in, what way he went? For his son had seen what the way the man of God went, which came from Judah. 13. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ashes, the ash. So, saddle me the ash. So they saddle him the ash, and he rode thereof. 14. And he went after the man of God, and found him sitting under a, a, under a walk. And he said unto him, As thou the man of God that comes from Judah? And he said, I am. 15. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. 16. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. 17. For, <clears throat> for it was said to me by the word of God, by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt not eat nor drink, no, thou shalt not eat nor bread nor drink water. The, no drink water there, no return again, again to go by the way that thou comest. 18. He said unto him, I am prophet also, as thou art, as thou art. And, 
and <clears throat> and an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thy house, that he may eat bread and drink water, but he lied unto him. Hallelujah. Just pay attention of this word on number 18. And then we still go back there to discuss. So he went back with him and did eat <coughs> bread in his house and they drank water. 20. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came into the prophet that brought him back. Listen to this. 21. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus said the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee. 22. But came, came back and has eaten, has eaten bread and, drink, and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did, did say to, to thee, eat not bread and drink not water. Thy carcass shall not come into the sepulchre of thy fathers. Praise Master Jesus. Praise the reading, the reading of the word of Lord, of the word of God. The title of our message today, do not be deceived. I mean, do not allow the enemy to deceive you in the name of my pastor said, my brother said, sister so 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 is a prophetess said, sister brother so 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 prophesy, sister so 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 she always prophesies things come to pass. We should be very careful of what God tells people. What God tells you, many people compromise their, 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 many people compromise their calling. I mean, the assignment God has given to them because of listening to the third person. When God tells you something, He tells you alone. He tells you alone, and you have to go. If you don't understand, you have to go back into prayer the same way to tell God to to talk to you in the way that you understand. So starting from verse 1, <clears throat> so this uh, man of God was sent by God to go to Judah, uh, to go to Bethel. God sent this young prophet to go and warn the king. The king, the king was uh, uh, burning, the, 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 he was doing what he was doing, he was not pleasing God. Then God sent the, the warning through this, uh, through this man. That the the child will be born in this king in this place. His name will be Josiah. That means the next king. God is preparing the next king that is going to do his will. Contrary to what this king is doing, this king was not obeying the word of God at all. He was not doing. He departed from the 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 the, the, the will of God completely. He was doing another thing. And this king. Got the warning. Instead of repenting, he started challenging the word of God. He wanted to challenge the word of God. He wanted to he, he wanted to get uh, to get the man of God that came to give him a warning to get him arrested. He said, "Put uh, put a hand on him." You understand? They wanted to arrest him. He said, "Who we'll give you the audacity to come and warn me to come because he's a king that was feared by by man then." You can see that this king was like a, a, he was doing practicing what is not for him to kill. It was a small thing. So he has the power to do evil. So he, ch he challenged the word of God. He wanted to kill this, this uh, prophet, this young man. He wanted to kill him so that nobody would come and change what he was preparing. Hallelujah. So as he wanted to put hold on him, God just struck him, you know. God just dry his hands as he stretched his hand to point on him. That's how the drive and the power of God that was upon the man, the protection of God that was upon the young prophet. He just dry his hand to know that that he touched not my anointed. Do no harm on my prophets. You understand? So God just struck him by dry his hand. The hand was not able to go down. Neither to pull it up, it becomes straight dry immediately. So he himself will notice that mm, there is something different from this young man. Because according to him, he used to um, he used to pray, he used to pay 
He used to give rewards to silence the prophets of God that was living in that land. Many people do that. Many people do that. They know that you have the anointing of God. You are doing the will of God. They will silence you. We should be careful. This Bible, this Bible verse, it gives us so many warnings. It teaches us so many lessons. If you read it very carefully, it talks about many things. You can go so many messages from God in this Bible in, that, in this particular Bible verse. It teaches us that you should be careful with polluted gift. Polluted gift that you silence the, the anointing of God in your life, that you silence the gift of God in your life. You understand? People are like this. People be giving you gift. Gift to take you out of the will of God. By the time you see the gift that you are, you are receiving, even if you see this person is doing something evil, you, you will not be able to warn him. Why? Because you know that uh, this one is the one that is blessing me. If I warn him now, he might, get, he might get upset and does not do. So you start fearing the person rather than God that gives you that anointing. Rather than God that put you in that position. You start selecting, you start doing things that will please that king. That was the case of the old prophet. The old prophet, he was a old prophet living in that battle. battle. But why God did not use him? Because he was questioning the spirit of God by receiving gifts from this king. It was, it was for sure receiving gifts for this, this king, and he was compromising his own anointing. He was compromising his own position. Instead of prophesying the word of God to the king, he was compromising because of the gift. Because this, people, this king, he used to offer gift for those that are coming to warn him, for those that are coming to stop him from doing, continue doing his evil. Anybody that will come in the name of God will just silence him by gift. That's why you see it happen to he wanted to do the same thing because he used to do it. To, he used to do it. So that's why he wanted to do it again. Because in verse um, in verse 7, after the man of God, the, in verse 6, he said, and the king answered and said unto him, he was begging him, he said, Please, with the power of God in you. Since my hand dried because of your power, can you seek also your God to restore my hand back? And this exactly this man of God pray immediately. God restore his hand just like it was before, like nothing happened. You know, he was so amazed for this power. He said, mm -mm -mm. How can I silence the power of this man? How can I take this man to become like other prophet? Because I tried to invite him in my house. Look. Now, invite him in his house. In verse 7, and said, And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and I refresh thy, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee rewards. You understand? Refresh thyself, and I will give you reward. But the man of God, they have the, the warning from God for himself. As he had a warning to the king, he also had the warning to himself. Because God knew what this king was doing to other prophets. He knew how this king used to silence the anointing of other prophets that he was sending to him. That's why he warned him in advance. He told him in verse 8, he knew in verse 8, he said, And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half, half thy house, I will not go I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. You understand? In this place, because that place was polluted. It was the anointing killer. It was killing the assignment of people. It was silencing the anointing of people, ending the assignment of many people. You understand? So he warned him that as you go there, don't even try to eat bread. Neither drink water because even their bread is polluted, their water is polluted. If you go there, they'll deceive you. If you go there, they'll deceive you. You understand? They will silence you. Don't even go back in the way that you come because you might be someone that is waiting for you to do you evil. So don't turn in a different way. In verse 9, he now put his expose himself. Expose himself. Let me tell you something. God spoke to every minister of God. God talked to his children. He gave them warning. He prepared them. He told them things. When God talked to you, it's not everything that you have to come and share with people. Some secret is for yourself. 
Just God want to prepare you to say that. Be careful. So, so person, he will do this to you. But people now, with pride, when they see that God communicating to them, they become so pride to come and say that, eh, hey, I even God revealed to me, eh, this is what is going to happen. If I do this, if I do that, is it really necessary? Is it really necessary for you to suppose yourself like that? You don't need to show up to people. You have your gift. Just focus on it. You understand? Just focus on it. You don't need to suppose yourself. You know? You don't need to suppose yourself by exposing your anointing. By exposing your anointing to other people. Exposing your, 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 your secret to other people, like what God told you. You don't need to tell other people that, eh, hey, this is what God is telling me. Eh, hey, this is what God is telling me. Your secret is secret. God is telling you that so that you know that he's with you. He's revealing you the, the, the things of other people around you. God can reveal to you the thing, the people that you are working with you that this one is so, 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 this one is like this, this one is like this. But it doesn't mean that you have to tell them because it will, you make your challenge to increase. You make your challenge to increase. Exactly what happened to, to Joseph. Joseph he attracted so many hatreds. Hatred. Joseph attracted so many hatred because of sharing of uh, uh, his secret. You understand? God said that I will make you great. He could have just kept it to make it to happen. But he was so excited. Hey, look at the revelation I have. Do you think it's everybody that is happy the way God is using you? Do you think it's every minister that is happy the way God is connecting with you? Some ministers of God, they don't even hear from God. The way you are hearing, they don't have, it's not everybody that has the gift of revelation, the gift of vision. Some people, they only communicate. God, the Bible, the, the word of God said, God has a different way of talking to people. He can talk to you through dream, through revelation, through open vision. Some people, they don't need to sleep. As they are standing like this, they are hearing from God. They are seeing things. You understand? So, to avoid jealousy, keep it for yourself. Do you understand? Just keep it to yourself. Just say that I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to do that. Oh, the, I'm not coming with you. I'm not hungry. So I'm rushing to go to another a place. Just that if this man kept it, he will not end up laboring in vain. Just that he did. You understand? So, because he opened up his secret, he attracted the enemies, the demons, the powers of darkness, to go now and fight him. Hallelujah. So you overcome, you will you, you, you will send for a success a successful mission. He accomplished his assignment by doing what God sent him to do. And only for the enemy to come and deceive you in the last moment. Ha! Huh. My brothers, my sisters, we are doing this work. We have so many challenges. We have so many trials. The enemy is claiming our soul day and night for exposing the works of the enemy. He's claiming our soul is waiting, is sending so many arrows for us to make a mistake so he can claim our soul. Because we are the enemy number one. We are the target number one of the enemy when you are preaching the truth word of God. When you are bringing the word that you bring transformation to heart of many. So we need to be very careful in everything that we do. We should not allow the pride to overtake our heart. Eh, I'm the real minister of God. And God talked to me. Everything that I'll do, God always revealed to me. Oh, really? Do you think it, the, some people, some demons, the powers of darkness, the angels of darkness, they will clap for you? Just close your eyes to the world. Just close your eyes to the world. You understand? Close your eyes to the world. Just focus on the word of God. Whether people are going to believe in your anointing or not, you don't need to prove it to anybody. Just keep it to yourself. Just keep it to yourself. Obey the word of him that sent you. When people say, ah, you, you shall, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. Eh, the word of God say, yeah, the, the, the woman should not preach. Eh, the word of God said, eh, the people will say all manner of things. But you know who called you. You know what, who is using you. You know who sent you. Obey the word of God that came to you. Obey. What God said, the assignment God gave in your hand. Because on that day, God is not going to ask those people that are going to deceive you. He will ask 
you according to his word that he gave to you. So that was the case of this young prophet. So when this young prophet rejected the, the, the reward of king, he stood on his feet by exposing his secret. God said, I should not do that, I should not do that, I should not even go back the way that I came. Because of a secret. The children of this, the sons, the children of this prophet, the old prophet that was down in the town for so many years, because of compromising, receiving the gift from this king, he compromised. The spirit of God left him. God was not using him anymore. Because of that, he was so jealous. So we can identify three spirits here. Disobedient spirit, Pride spirit and, and the jealousy spirit. You understand? The disobedience of this man by disobeying the word of God that warned him not to eat bread. And the spirit of pride that to show that uh, God already told me that if I do this, that is what is going to happen. So I don't do that, I don't do that. Show up. Show up spirit is another side of pride. And also the jealousy spirit of this world prophet and also the lying spirit of this world prophet. Because in verse 18, in verse 17, in verse 16, is it 16? Yeah. So these children, the children of this prophet on, the, on verse 11, it says, in verse 11, he said, Now there, now there dwell, dwell, and now there dwelt a whole, an old prophet in Bethel. And his son came and told him all the works that the man of God has done in that day in Bethel. And the word which he has spoken to, he has spoken to the king, to the king. Then they told also to their father. You understand? So, he was like, mm. When the old prophet told him the authority and the power and the boldness of this young prophet to challenge the king, to stand in his foot without compromising, the children told him how he denied, how he challenged the king, how he gave the warning from God with, to, to the king without, without even selecting what he gave him as God gave him, and how he challenged the power of God in him, challenged the king by drawing the hand of king and restored the hand of king, and how he rejected the gift of king. He was like, who is that man? I need to know him. Thing that he as a whole prophet was not able to do. That young man did it. That young man did it. And because that young man did it, he was so jealous that how God did not use him as a famous, as a famous prophet in the town. God sent another, another prophet from and even younger than him. According to him that he have no experience to come from far, to come and do the work that he used to do, he is supposed to do. That's exactly what is happening in the body of Christ. Many people are so jealous. Oh, this one, she does, she's not even educated. She cannot even speak English. She doesn't even know the Bible. How can he come and do that and do that? You see the person is doing. He have the boldness that you as a whole minister, you don't have that boldness to preach the truth. You see the person that is standing the truth in any cost, that is not ready to compromise. You start jealousy the person, insulting the person, doing all evil, trying to quench the anointing and the fire in the life of this person. That is evil. You are the old prophet. You have the spirit of the old prophet. You have to repent. Although God has called you, although God is the one that gives you that title, but if you don't repent, you end up also missing your salvation because of that spirit of jealousy. So when this prophet heard, the, truth, the, the son told him everything, even they, they explained how he said that uh, God told him not to eat bread, not to do, not to return the way he came from. Oh, they, they directed everything to their father. As they narrated everything to their father, the father now the heart of jealousy said, mm -mm, I must make him to fall. I must make him to compromise. I must make him to become like me so that God also will not use him. Nobody can take my place. The body of Christ is big. One person cannot do this work. So why are you jealous of another person? Can you go to all the countries in the world? How many countries do we have in the world? Today you see ministers challenging other ministers in the name of jealousy. In the name of jealousy. Saying lies about other ministers because you don't want the other minister to stand. 
If you are not standing, it's your own business. Allow the person to do the work God has called after. Many ministers today, they are jealous. You see the fighting. They are no longer fighting demons in the body of Christ. They are no longer fighting Satan. They are not. They fight now start from themselves. They are fighting one another. They are fighting each other. The competing spirit has taken over the church, has taken over the, 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 the body of Christ. The spirit of all, all prophets, stop. The spirit of all prophets is the one that now ruling in the body of Christ. The spirit of all prophets is the one that is ruling in the body of Christ today. You understand, in the name of jealousy. Who is that minister? Where she come from? How did this start? When did this start? Who anointed him? Who anointed her? I'm the one that anointed her. I'm the one that gave her that title. I'm the one that, you know, no, but if, you, if it was not me, she would not even be able to do. Who are you until you have to anoint somebody? Who are you that you have called somebody, that you have put the person? I'm the one who put her there. Who are you? Which power do you have to put somebody there? If God gives you the grace to anoint, to put the oil, to put the, just to put the oil, because anointing comes from God. Nobody has the power to anoint anybody. Anointing comes from God alone. If God said that it's through you that is going to bring grace to that person, yes, a God will not pour anointing from heaven straight away, physically, spiritually, he will pour it. Physically, he will need to use somebody. Now, if God uses you to be the one to pour oil, that God you used to anoint the person. You become pride. I'm the one. You can check. It's so, so, so day. I'm the one did that. I'm the one do that. Pride. Hmm? So if God called you, that's why now you want to quench the fire of that person, knowing that you are the one called that person. Do you have any event for that person? Do you have any anointing? Do you die for that person in the first place? Pride. We should stop this spirit of old prophet. When did Samuel went to anoint David, God said that go anoint the, the, the person that the, the, the person that is going to replace Saul. He said, Go anoint. But the Bible is saying that David was anointed by God Himself. Who why? God used Samuel. Samuel was just an instrument. David was the anointed, anointed of God. He was anointed by God himself. He only used Samuel to go there to put the oil on the head of David. But he was anointed by God. He was anointed by God. Even Saul, so, King Saul, so, he was anointed by God. But God only used Samuel to put oil on his head. Now imagine Samuel getting pride of David. Even when he went to talk to Samuel, he told Samuel, remember where God took you. Remember the day God anointed you. He never presented himself to, some, to, to Saul that, remember the day I came to anoint you. No, because he knew that he had no power to anoint. King Samuel, sorry, Prophet Samuel knew that he had no power to anoint anybody. It's God that was doing through him. That's why even when he was talking to, to King Saul, he said, remember where God took you from. Remember the day God chose you and anointed you to be the one to lead his people. He never said that the day I came to anoint you. But today people say that. I'm the one that put her there. I'm the one that anointed her. Anointed her. I'm the one because you are the one that put her there. You still want to be the one to take her out of that place. Do you have power? Do you really have power to do so? We should stop that pride. If God is using you, be, be grateful that, yes, you obtain the mercy of God. It's not because you are better than every other people that you are preaching. Maybe the people you are preaching, they are even better than you. It's just the grace of God. It's the grace of God. It's not because you are doing the work of God, because you are right in the eyes of God. God says you have mercy to whom you have mercy. If the tight will qualify somebody to heaven, the ministers of God, the pastor, they will not be crying in hellfire. You understand. So the spirit of world prophet is ruling over the heart of many people. Try to quench the fire of those that are standing for the truth. That's exactly the world prophet. When they he was told that what happened, he was not happy that it was another God can use another person. He was not happy. God is still using people even as I'm talking to you. 
Every second, God is raising a prophet somewhere. God is raising an evangelist somewhere. God is raising a pastor somewhere. God is encountering people somewhere. God is not going to wait for you to do his work. God is walking. God is always ahead of us. If you think because God is talking to you, God only, some people think God only talk to them, themselves. Just because other people, they are not sharing their, their revelation. That's because other people, they are not supposing themselves. They think that God only talk to him. Eh, me, everything I do, hmm, God will talk to me. Father God, Father God will reveal to me. Father God will reveal to you, but your character is not changing. Father God will reveal to you, your attitude is, so, is, so, is still bad. Are you not an abomination before God? Are you not an abomination before God? This is the time to start testing the spirit that is talking to you. Because if that spirit that is talking to you doesn't want you to change, then who is talking to you? Because the spirit of God is to bring transformation in our life. If you are not able to listen to the spirit of God and bring transformation, the word of God is enough to transform somebody. If you are still not changing, after hearing God only talk to you, and God talk to you everything. God talk to you with other people's character. God talk to you, give you on uh, with other people. Did not give you warning. Because this young prophet, he, God gave him a warning to go to, for the king. He also gave a warning to himself. He said, as you are going there, don't eat bread. Don't drink water. Don't even go back in the same way you are going through, you came from. He gave him warning. When God is giving you warning to go and warn to people, he also give your own. As you're preaching to others, also preach to yourself. As you're, you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are warning other people, we also work your own salvation. Ah, Apostle Paul was wise. He said, let it not be that as I'm preaching to others, me myself will be cast away. David was also wise. He said, change me. Give me. Give me a clean heart. Renew my spirit. If this spirit that is using me is contrary to your spirit, then renew it. Give me the right one so that I'll do your will. Ah, and you're still distracted. This is not time to be deceived. Focus on the word of God. Meditate the word of God. Do according to what is written there. Walk through it and you see transformation in your life. Ah, let us rest for today and come back again on Tuesday with the same topic. Then I'll finish the rest of the story. May the Lord bless you for today. Love you all. Shalom. So this is my little sister, uh, my little sister's daughter, my niece, Moisette. Say shalom. Say bye-bye. Shalom.